How's it going? Hey, long time no see. Uh, back yep. for we're, we're back for season two. I love it. Thank you for thank you for coming back. Thank you for having us. I've got a special new guest with me today, which I'm very excited to introduce. And I'll turn it over to Drew to kick us off. All right. Hello, hello. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, thank you, Brand Innovators, for putting together a great program today. Thank you to all the attendees out there. Saw a lot of people uh, signing up for today's panel. I am uh, honored. I am beyond excited to be a part of this next panel moderating with true brand innovators. Some would say they are the dynamic duo of music and influencer marketing today. Uh, together, they have been one of the most influential, creative, and innovative marketing teams showing industry leadership through just groundbreaking artist and brand partnerships and specifically creative executions that are truly driving cultural conversations. My name is Drew Stein. Hello, I'm your moderator for this panel. I'm the founder and CEO of Autogen, premier data company for uh, entertainment, sports, and lifestyle, and whose deep global partnerships with Warner Music Group, Universal, uh, make us perfect moderators for the next panel. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Shana Berry, head of music and entertainment for Anheuser-Busch, and Kesley Watch, Associate Creative Director for DraftLine. Let's dive in now, first and foremost, uh, with some simple introduction. Please tell us who you are, a little bit about your roles, and most importantly, we wanna hear about your amazing creative partnership together, how it began and how it's evolved. Amazing, Kess, kick, kick us off. Man, I feel like I could walk into that intro every day. <laughs> first <laughs> off, so thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like to call Shada my partner. I am the Associate Creative Director for DraftLine, which is Einhauser Bush's in-house agency. I've worked with Shana on Bud Light for almost three years, and now we've expanded the, the relationship to move more for, full portfolio, but couldn't think of a better person to help be innovative with and, and lead the way in terms of creative. Um, before I introduce myself again, Drew, you, you forgot your beanie, man. I mean, yeah, we I'm talked sorry. about this. <laughs> but I got my Bud Light. All right. Okay. Very, very good. Very good. <laughs> Product placement at its core. But no, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? I'm so happy to and, and honored to be back. It, it, that really was a, a, a truly remarkable introduction. And I recorded it to make sure I could play it when I go from my couch to my chair every morning. Um, <laughs> but, but Cass and I are so happy to be here. Um, if any of you were able to catch um the september uh fireside chat we were talking with carrie uh from a public my partner on um you know all things posty and, and what it means to be uh relationship driven with talent and and brands and here i think it's very exciting to talk about really the in-depth conversation about how creative really drives that narrative for us um and of course you know we're so happy to have you moderate because you know data at the forefront is something that we're we're always looking into and and we don't really take a step without it at Anheuser Busch. And I think it's very important to point that out because while we're going to talk a lot about the art and the heart of it today, um, data and science drives everything that we do at AB um, without a doubt. Um, and if not, you know, our, our legal teams make sure of that. Um, but it's, it's really exciting when we start to marry those things. And, um, you know, for those of you that I haven't met before, thank you so much for joining. It's, it's really, it's a pleasure to be able to to have these conversations and, and really that like Kesley and I want to want to give a little peek behind the curtain today um, and sort of chat about things, maybe some like secret sauce, or like things that you didn't know about um, and really keep it fresh. And you guys know that we're leaders and innovators, um, you know, for for many decades in, in music and entertainment. So we wanted to kind of give a little end of year sort of flavor and and peek uh, what we've done during quarantine and what we've got coming up ahead in 2021 and beyond. Amazing. Um... Appreciate the backstory. Uh, certainly, um, really helps set the stage for what we're about to talk about. And yeah, creativity being the ultimate driver here is so important. Um, part of that is some of the biggest choices you make in terms of how you tap into talent and who you choose. Um, with the talent you work with, frankly, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, pretty much everybody knows some of the amazing, uh, from Post Malone and beyond, some of the amazing talent uh, that you are able to bring in uh, to the fold. It's it's absolutely extraordinary. And I'm sure, frankly, there's some other brands out there that are jealous watching how seamless uh, your team makes it look. Um, without revealing too much of the secret sauce, I mean, how, how do you do it? How do you tap into talent 
so successfully. Um, I know you can't tell it's everything, but give us a peek, as you said, behind that curtain. How have you been so successful into tapping into talent? Yeah, I think, you know, and I'll kind of speak to this too, but one of the one of the first things that we always love to do when we're signing a new deal, when we're renewing a deal, um, or when a new cycle is coming up, even for an artist or talent, we really sit down and we love to have the conversation of what can AB do for you that other suppliers couldn't. We know that our contemporaries that we're we are following like crazy, whether it's Verizon, State Farm, all the work that everyone's doing in partnership space, we like to say, what is it that AB can bring to the table that others truly couldn't? What do we have at our disposal, whether it's our media prowess, our creative prowess, uh, our scale? Those are very important things that we start to think about. And then as Kess kind of dives in on their creative side, they start to open up and have these different you know, types of conversations. Maybe we can speak a little bit to the Posty Merch, which was a really fun one. Um, yeah, I think Shane has set it up naturally, right? Like, I think the biggest thing Shane and I look at as we approach the creative for the artist is, does it feel natural, right? Is it authentic to them? Because the biggest thing that we don't want to do is just logo slap, right? Like, we, we find ways to, like, naturally integrate into their lifestyles in a way that makes sense. So it's it's something that they're already doing. And to Shana's point, like, that kind of opened up Posty's world as we were developing stuff a few years ago, looking at what, what would a merch line look for him, like, how do we kind of combine both the talent and AB, like pulling into our catalogs and making vintage merch exclusive and special for him in a way that felt right, you know, yeah. not something that would just be be merch to be merch, but something that's going to make it feel elevated and special to him and also be apparent for AB too. So I think that's where we find like the, the magic sauce of meeting between talent what's good for AB and the brand that we're, we're associating to the talent, right? Like for Bud Light, for instance, for Posty. I think that's where we start seeing a little bit of the magic come through a bit more. And and maybe talk a little bit about, um, like I know part of what makes it so special is you really have that one-to-one -one relationship with the artist. And that frankly is not something you see from other brands. And it's so apparent with your relationships. How does that happen? How do you, how do you craft those one-to-one -one relationships? I, I love the question. I think it's, you know, we've we've talked about this a lot. I've talked about it a lot publicly, you know, and, and on the heels of what we were just saying, it's we are brands that people know and love already for the most part, right? We're, I'd love for us to have the opportunity to talk about some of our in innovative brands um, that are in the pipeline now and big bets. But really, like when you think of Bud, Bud Light, Stella, Ultra, I mean, we've got these powerhouse brands that we don't have to do a lot of education for, right? You know the occasion for the most part, you know the passion point association, and you know the talent that will fit. And all of a sudden, like our ability to place some bets and think five, 10 years ahead, that's really important to us because we don't have to think, oh, sh you know, shoot, what are we doing for the next trimester campaign? I always forget if I can swear or not. The next, <laughs> the next trimester campaign or, you know, what we're doing for holiday, it really gives us the ability to think so much further ahead and pair that with the fact that we're also incredibly nimble. Kess and I were like one of our favorite meetings of the week is newsroom. We have our draft line part of part of our company every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Like the whole like hundreds of us are dialed in and we're thinking about what is going on in culture. We do it daily, but also we're thinking about on a weekly basis, monthly basis, how can we tap into those types of things? So as at our scale, I, I think what we find very incredible is that we're able to think like, holy shit, can we turn an asset around overnight and launch this campaign in the morning because someone tweeted something? That's how Philly Philly happened. That's how the Browns Fridge happened. That's how Cam Lions happened for us. That's how the Nelly campaign happened. Like, it's just, it's really remarkable when you think of our scale, the fact that we are able to really dream big and think five, 10 years ahead, one year ahead, but also tomorrow morning. So when, when you think about that agility and you think about the talent that you're tapping into, like, so when you make that decision, is the decision purely about the artist or does it also include, um, given you, you want to dream big, given that you have such massive scale, is it also about that artist fan base? Is it also about the audience as well? How close are those decisions? Are, do, does that come into play when you're thinking about um, an artist partnership about specifically those audiences and those fan bases and th that can help propel the, that next day story for you because built into it is like these massive audiences. Maybe share a little bit more about how you think about that and some of those big decisions you make. I think about Bush, App Bush Apple mm -hmm. and the launch of that creative perhaps. 
Yeah. Bush Apple is huge. It was tapping into Bush Light, which was launching a new innovation product and the and the consumers that we knew that we had and how they respond to things we put into culture. It was something that it went viral. It just it was purchased up so quickly. It was such an interesting way to see like how consumers react to not only our brand, but want to get behind it and rally behind it and make it louder in culture. And I think that's been the fascinating part with Shana and I is like, not only with artists, but outside of that too, like how do we create such a wave? Yeah. Bush got talent in that regard. Exactly. (laughs) And he has his flannel shirt. Like he, he is now a known character. And I think that's really another thing. Think about like, Think about the the you know the Bud Light Kingdom that we developed over the last couple of years and how many times we've killed off the Bud Knight and who knows maybe it's going to come back soon. Um, but there's like creating these worlds and these personas. It doesn't just it is not just Posty and Maluma and Priyanka. It is Harvick, right? When we think about the talent, it is Jimmy Butler. It is Bush guy, right? And build our ability to really create these characters and put them on a stage and have him do a reveal of our product as, you know, a la Steve Jobs, and then pair that with Ferris Bueller's, oh yeah. I mean, we almost got the sync request the, the immediately following when the campaign ended. Let's renew it. And really just that power of creating like, okay, I can relate to Bush guy just as much at like that consumer can relate to Bush guy and think of the data behind it, right? So you guys are looking at artist data all day hundreds of thousands of data points we're doing the same thing with bush guy right if he puts on a different color flannel shirt i mean i don't know we might lose him it's like that that's his work that's his uniform this is our uniform (laughs) um but it's it's something that we look like closely at as well like those those fine those that little fine tuning is is extremely important for us yeah i mean it's amazing to see how your creative is the glue that connects all of those dots together, right? The artist, the fan, and the brand. It's powerful. And I, I think that's part of why you demonstrate so much industry leadership. Um, switching gears a little bit, just uh, talking about um, how pivotal uh, your your brand has been in 2020. Um, 2020 has been a hard year for a lot of people. It's been challenging for every brand marketer, but it's been challenging for the fans and the audiences as well as the artists. Um, Budweiser and your work there truly has been uh, an inspiration for the industry and for everyone. Uh, No one moved faster than your team. Reacting quickly, pivoting, and putting content out there that made a difference. Tell us a little bit more about um, you know, Bud's reaction to uh, COVID, how quickly you were able to put together creative programs, how quickly you were able to work with your uh, artists to reach fans. I'll, let me open it up, but then it, this, this one is way more about the creative. The beauty of, of the two programs that really are, are holding strong for us that that I love to talk about is the dive bar tour, but like dive bar tour, as well as the work that the Michelob Ultra team has done in in at home workouts, right? And we think about these are like no brainers. Go back, I mean, dive bar tour launched with Gaga 2016. I mean, you know, in Red Hook at this shithole dive bar. I mean, that was where we shot the content. So powerful. Fast forward to what we did with Neva, right, and the YouTube team. It was just really remarkable that like that is our bread and butter that started IRL but also had a live component, which now we're like, wow, was that like innovative? <laughs> I don't know. But basically it was the fact that we're gonna spend so much money on this talent and bring this experience to so many people, but you can only fit like a hundred people in the dive bars that we're, do- that we're going to. So naturally we're like, you guys gotta get more scale. So we always had the IRL and IVL, which is now a phrase we're all using. And then coming out of COVID, which is so amazing, is we're able to come out with this hybrid. Think of, the ultra workouts that we're doing. We were at Camelback. We sold nine. We sold nine hundred tickets. The fact that there are people that are willing to purchase a weekend experience with us is so so powerful. And the brand, like we're the brands that are that are there. You guys were talking about what concerts you want to go to when you get back. By the way, my answer is Rage Against the Machine as well. I'm really pissed, but I didn't get to go to that. Um, but just from like Cass, I'd love for you to speak from a creative standpoint. The fact that we're able to just take our assets and. I mean, again, like secret sauce is kind of templatized. Like she and I were mm-hmm. like, yeah, we have our midnight standing calls, but we know we're like, okay, we're hitting up Matt Ringo and we're hitting up, the, you know, better, like all the teams <laughs> and like, guys, just give us the headshot and let's, and we can move. We can have a show tomorrow. 
Honestly, I mean, that's kind of the way it's been in COVID. We've been riding the the same emotional roller coaster everyone else has and been forecasting for that. Like, what type of entertainment are they looking for? You know, like, that's been the biggest part, not only across Bud Light and Ultra, but other brands, too, as we've looked at this, is how are we going to impact in a special way that consumers are looking for that, right? I'm a consumer. I'm looking for that. So let me put them, myself in their shoes and make sure the creative we're making feels right for this, Right. I think that's been a big part of creative right now is that you don't want to be tone deaf. You want to be, you want to be like sensitive to what you're showing and making sure what you're putting out there is something that people actually want. So things like the dive bar tour home edition, Shane and I whipped up in no time was entertainment for us on the same day it was going live. We had, you know, that was such a fun project to show like how nimble we've been, but also enjoy for us too. Like watching people we've worked with in the past perform small shows in their house with an iPhone. Yeah, Fletcher, Fletcher was in her, was in Bob's uh, garage. It was in her <laughs> parents' garage. That's going to be a memory that I'll never forget. Like even as a consumer and as a creative building up to it, it just, it's more, it's become very meaningful to make sure we're putting out work that's special and feels creative and doesn't feel like we're just logo slapping. That's a big thing for us is making sure it feels right. Yeah, that's, that's great. And certainly when it feels personal and when you can connect with it yourself, when you know it's important to you, just you can imagine how important it feels to so many other people out there. And of course, the success speaks volumes and what you've been able to achieve there, having the you know, certainly one of the number one U.S. originating live streams for throughout this period is is a pretty, pretty good accomplishment uh, for the team to uh, to achieve. Um, yeah. You know, I, you know, was there is there any one story? Is there any fan feedback that you got um, over over this period of COVID that really stuck in your mind, where you felt like we really made a difference today? Um, yep. You know, we it, some listen. We're in the business of reaching masses, um, but sometimes you know, I just wonder, um, yeah. you know, whether you know, whether there's that one person you know that you made a change or a difference, or some of the feedback that you got and what made that special. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We, you know, again, we love having you moderate this because because this really this really hones in on our data skills and social listening skills. It's good, kind of like the creep effect, right? We're looking at every single tweet. But in all seriousness, it is when we were doing those early shows and looking at the comments and everyone saying, I have a five minute break. It's all first responders. I have a five minute break. I have a 10 minute break. And I have the ability to watch this concert or the nurses and I were on shift change. And I mean that, you know, we mean it wholeheartedly. The fact that we're watching that in real time and they're saying we're gathering around our iPhone just to watch this, man, it's, yeah, it's just, it's so powerful and keeps us going. And it, and it gives us pause to say we, we're, we sell beer, canned wine, canned cocktails and, uh, you know, and, and, and sparkling water. And it's, it's, it, it makes us feel like we are we are truly having an impact. Um, not only you know that, but just you know we raised a you know half a million dollars with Red Cross just through the first fourteen diver tour shows at home, and artists really working with us on saying you know what, you know it, it, it's not a it, it's more about what can we collectively do? How can I keep my team employed? And this feels so you know phase one when we think back. I'm looking at my window; it's snowing right now. I, think, <laughs> I thought that there was just. I thought it was just March, you know, 175th day. Um, but the fact that we're really able to make an impact and a continued impact. And those little comments, those comments I said, we we're gathering around our screen and you guys have done something for us that like, we do not take that lightly. Yeah, I mean, that gave me chills just hearing that story. Uh, frankly, I could Im imagine what it would be like to just get a stream of those knowing that you were making a real difference. Um, yeah. You know, you were making a moment happen. Uh, it's something that you you talked about multiple times, and uh, and it's really it's a, it's a, just a different approach. It's a different mindset, um, and yeah. you know, and it, I think it's part of why there's been the success um, there's been. And speaking of success, I think we can kind of turn uh, to the next question. Uh, 2020 was a year of incredible merch merch collaborations uh, for, for many brands. Uh, having been a part of the media campaign success as Autogen for both uh, McDonald's and Travis Scott and McDonald's and uh, Jay Balvin, I can tell you firsthand, it's been awesome to see the creativity. Uh, how 
uh, the assets were created, the fan engagement behind it. This is truly one of the hottest brand artist opportunities we see out there right now. And no doubt Budweiser has shown huge leadership. Your team has shown leadership and innovation in this space as a trailblazer with Post Malone and beyond. You kind of tip, uh, tipped the hat a little bit uh, to that before. Tell us about the success of your merch collaborations and specifically the amazing creative approaches that you chose to take that drove that success. I I mean, we alluded to this earlier, right? I think the power of collaboration between Shane and I and figuring out what's going to feel the best for the artist has been one of the most satisfying feelings I think you can have as a creative, right? Like to be able to make something that I've, I've seen Maluma wearing without <laughs> any request, just naturally in his everyday life, I think that speaks wonders, right? Like we worked really hard to make something that felt very, very special to Maluma this summer. I worked alongside Shayna that would elevate Maluma, make it special for him with his new album release and also help bring out Michelob Ultra Pure Gold, which is where we tied that to and where do you make those worlds meet? Same way I was kind of talking about with Post Malone and Bud Light and how that feels like a natural fit. It was the same thing with Maluma. Like, it's all the it was all based around Miami and how do you bring in a lot of the organic feeling, make really interesting and special stuff for him and release it in an interesting way, right? We did a live stream to with his new album and then dropped it with the actual live stream. Pull, pull back the curtain a little bit. I mean, pr bring us into the meeting. Like I know everyone wants to like know what that's like to be in the meeting when you're first presenting um a merch idea to an artist and gauging their reaction to it and kind of diving into that that collaboration i think we all dream about being in meetings like that like oh my like, gosh join us join give us, us. <laughs> give us a little bit uh give us a little bit of insight like how do those meetings go how do right, you prepare right. for those meetings like oh, when you're first <laughs> presenting that merch idea or, you know is it like like when should bring us into the aha moment Oh man, there's so many. Um, okay, Cass and I have this obsession with Maluma and his uh, um, his palm trees and that vibe and the Miami vibe. And his team said we want to be Miami roof like Poppy Wancho. Like if you guys can nail this Poppy Wancho moment, like let's do the album together, let's release the merch together, let's let's do it in three chapters, let's do it you know waterside, let's do it incredibly COVID safe, obviously, uh, with this whole other conversation. But it is literally collaborating with with Clara, his team, Miguel, like the entire team. And Tess and I happen to know this incredible photographer. His name's Will Nichols. Will Nichols started photographing the NBA, but now he's really known. He's at Will Nichols. Shout out to Will. Um, he takes the most incredible shots of sunset palm trees. And we said, OK, we want to as, as creatives ourselves, we want to employ our friends. We know that people are having challenging times. And we said, we said, you know, we, we would love to have Will on board and, and immediately he was up and we, you know, it was a photo licensing moment and the actual creative cut and sews that we did with Evan Blair over at uh, The Bright Pursuit, those, those are cut and sew pieces. So like we are cut at printing and cutting our fabrics and custom. You, you guys always see him in these you know, matching two sets. Like we need to make sure that we are living up to that. We can't just like drop a t-shirt. Of course, we had like the cozy, like I'm wearing the shorts right now, the tie dye, like <laughs> those shorts are amazing. I can see why he wears them all the time now, but we wanted to make sure we were elevating it. And I think that's super important. It's something I'll come back to, but the fact that we were able to make a cut and sew premium option for consumers, leverage photography from our friends that we know are at the heart and soul and kind of rise up the creative industry in that regard, hopefully, and show that there's opportunities for other creatives, that we want to purchase your photo, that we want you to be a part of this journey with us. And then as Kess was saying, all of a sudden, you know, he's on, he's traveling, you know, to VMAs, et cetera, and he's in our merch. We didn't ask for any of that. Those are those such special sweet spot moments that we're like, man, we, there's the deal and there's, there's really just that bread and butter of it where, where you realize like, all right, we're doing something incredible together. So that was kind of peek behind the curtain. So we'll that's do. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, from our perspective, we we certainly see the financial success of these merch campaigns because we 
I mean, the number of units that get sold is yeah. unbelievable. Even on small media dollars, you drive millions and millions of dollars of sales. With the McDonald's um, employee shirts going with, with Travis going on resale. I mean, that's our dream, right? Like we had empty cans of Posty Bud Light, empty cans, 12 of them, 275 bucks. Who bought that? I would like to have a conversation I, with them. I, Thank I, you. I can tell you we have the exact numbers and we, uh, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. It's millions of dollars worth of ROAS. Yeah on that campaign was 50x. I mean, one of the most successful media campaigns of 2020 for sure. Um, and, uh, but it, I mean, it's, it was a great, started with this great creative yeah. spark, this great creative idea and uh, amazing creative execution. And then boom, the fans yeah. just loved it. Uh, it was like, again, it goes back to like, how the, that creative becomes the glue between the brand and the mm -hmm. fan and ultimately, you know, um, the artist. And that's just amazing when you can see that work out yeah. so well uh, for everyone involved. It's it's truly virtuous. Yeah, it really is. And for us, you know, just to build build upon that, what we were saying, and, and Cass and I talk about this all the time and our creative teams talk about it, and with brand teams. And again, as the leaders, we feel we're like, we've got so much pressure on our shoulders to be like, you gotta keep driving forward. You have to dream even bigger and you have to bring the industry forward. And no one's like, asking us to do it, but we've got this precedent, right? When we have a, the ability to be in Vogue three times, Vogue. I mean, Liana, wow, that's really incredible. And we do not take that lightly. The fact that we have our beer brands in one of the most prestigious fashion outlets in the world is remarkable. So if, as we think about that, it's like, okay, how do we continue to per push the merch game forward? But at the same time, be very conscious of the fact that everyone is looking at every single dollar spent. So that, yes. that's twofold for us, right? So we're thinking, how do we provide something that is meaningful to the consumer that makes them really attribute and love our brand because we put it out together, but also recognize the fact that, man, I, I wanna make sure that I'm not I'm not dropping, you know, there there are some of us that will we'll spend the money on the hoodie, right? But we, we wanna make a point to say that we're very conscious that beer is for everyone, seltzer, hard seltzer is for everyone, our canned cocktail is for everyone, babe is for everyone, certainly. And so those types of things, like we have all of those things in mind as we're making them. And I think, again, like we, Kevin and I wanted to make a point to to really emphasize the fact that we're conscious of the economics that go into it at all. Because at the end of the day, we do all these things to build brand love. We, you know, we think of kind of financial second, at least on our side. It's really, you know, if we're putting this out, why do you love our brand more? Why do you associate us with an incredible memory? Well, what, what's amazing, you know, for me to see uh, or hear when, when we talk about it, you, you know, you are really the first team to talk about it. I mean, really just transcend the products themselves and talk about driving true cultural conversation. Maybe that's part of maybe the next question. Um, and, 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 and that is unique. Most people thinking product first, you clearly don't. I mean, you are thinking about something far bigger and, and just going far beyond that it's bigger and it's about moments or cultural conversation. And that really struck me in our conversation, um, you know, prior to this, uh, I can't think of a time where Anheuser-Busch was not at the forefront of important cultural conversations. And you know, part of why I think your ethos uh, individually and both as a company has made made it just be so effective in terms of how you connect with the audiences. Maybe maybe talk uh, or share a little bit more insight about the importance of how you connect with your audiences and how you prioritize that. I'll start, because I think this is a big part of what we do in creative, right? I think Shana alluded to this. We have a newsroom. We're constantly watching to see what's happening in culture. Where does it make sense to latch onto it and start pushing it? I think. We find with every brand, there's a bit of a, a place to play. So we're not all hopping on to the same thing. But I mean, think about when we launched with Area 51 and how, oh, big, how, that, how big that got. Yeah, we made that was crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's coming back in 2020. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, moments monolith. like that. Monolith. <laughs> the monolith, <laughs> the new Area 51 for sure mm -hmm. for us. It's just interesting because those are things that we move quite quickly on and we're always watching like how do we how do we play in the space that's not going to be speaking at consumers but it's creating these moments or amplifying these moments that are special that people can remember in the future. 
Do, do you think um, when you create part of creating that moments, do you think that helps you maybe go maybe a little bit deeper? Talk, maybe talk about a little, little bit about that kind of high, not just that those global moments or the national moments, but kind of yeah. going hyper local and kind of creating moments that are more specific to right. uh, you know those individual uh, those individual places or product yeah. or people. I mean, put a finger down if you would have put a bet on Nelly coming in third on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I mean, he crushed it. Nelly is just a friend of He's got some moves. Um, I found out in the meet and greet, he's a big bowler. So there's a little fun fact. Uh, he had, a, he had a, a big moment where our procurement team challenged him. Uh, to uh, to a bowling bowl bowl out bowling match. I don't know what that is, but oh. uh, it was a very unique meet and greet. I will say, and all meet and greets are, are conducted via Zoom, so we kind of like eavesdrop in on them and uh, make sure it goes smoothly. And that was fantastic. Shout out to Luke. Um, but that that one's really important for us with Budweiser. Okay, so when you think of the work that we started off with, Budweiser is we are Bud. We are Anheuser Bush. We are Budweiser. And when you think of that heritage brand, like you think of St. Louis, right? So the Nelly campaign was just like, yeah, absolutely, this is happening. Um, you know, been a been a friend of ours for for you know two decades, and um, so we had we had the Big Boy can, we had the Big Big Sean can, which was really remarkable. Uh, dropping with Detroit too, incredibly successful, and just a, a, also a longtime friend of the brand. Um, and we started to see, we're like, okay, how can we start to impact? One to one again, going back to that notion of the fact that we are this of a supplier, we're the largest beer, beer supplier in the world. But how do we talk one to one? And how do we do that? We go into the market, we make cans specific for that market, and we speak to them and we make it outside of them. We celebrate them. We celebrated the anniversary of country grammar, we celebrated the drop of Detroit, too. And we have so many incredible ones coming up in 2021, which we're so excited to work on. But that's really the spirit of it is taking that Hallmark brand and bringing it all the way down where I can go across the street to my corner store and I can buy, you know, the next, I almost said the, the next one, I won't, the next one in 2020 that will be dropping in Q2 and hopefully another one. So spring and fall, we've got this, this momentum going. That's really exciting. But power that with the fact that a new album, a celebration of something happening, someone being on Dancing with the Stars. Like, is Dancing with the Stars the new playbook? I was like, <laughs> I'm really not sure I that can right? control that. Um, but those are very remarkable things when we think about Bud, like the proliferation of SKUs. Even when you look at the entire Anheuser-Busch portfolio, there's, there's just dozens and dozens and dozens of options. Multiply that by the fact of how many other suppliers there are. And you go to your local store and you're like, why are you going to choose that heritage brand? If you have a connection to it, you're going to pull that Nelly can down. Yep. Want to have can. And that's that's really the biggest thing for us that, you know, and then you combine that with creative and the bud team saying, yeah, you can you can alter the crest. Yeah, you can put the lyrics in there. And Kess, you know, they're working on some of the creative now that we're even further evolving it, which was like, wow, you don't expect that from heritage brands where they're like mm -hmm. this is this is the bow tie and that's the bow tie and you can't touch the bow tie. We're like here's the layered files, and that's where I work with Shana, right? I can plant these Easter eggs in the design, like same way we do with Posty. It's like what's something that's going to feel fun for the the audience that loves Nelly that they're going to see this and be like, oh, they knew Nelly and launching it in a local way so it speaks more to the community and not at them like all those are really important things for us creatively as we look to launch in local areas and creating the overall like the the packaging design all of the creative work that goes into it it's always us looking at ways to like get the consumer to say oh they know what they're doing i mm -hmm. see you we want that i see you moment you know yeah. plant these yeah. special special moments in places people don't expect at all yeah, I I love those responses, and and for us at Autogen, when we you know we think the concept of especially in a digital world of hyper local has changed, and to be able to create product, yeah, you're pairing it. Yeah, it's specifically put it mm -hmm. in front of those fans and in front of those audiences that we know are going to appreciate it. Those hyper local audiences now are not just physical locations, but they've really now become digital right. groups of fan bases and. And how the, how you tap into those, how you dynamically uh, you know create something for those audiences and deliver it effectively has never been 
uh, more exciting. So I really uh, that your answers really just resonate with me, and um, and I and I think it's part of what makes whatever the future is so exciting uh, about um, about some of these activations. So. Um, in thinking about measuring success and driving engagement, live stream is 2020 has been the year for live stream for sure. Yeah, it has sure. just taken off, of course, um, making sure that fans are safe, uh, first and foremost, so important. But of course, because of COVID and live touring uh, being put on hold, I also want to go see Rage Against the Machine. All right, uh, hey, Drew. Uh, for sure. <laughs> I um, didn't expect that. I will, uh, you know, I will say that um, it, it's really changed. It's really changed the game. It's we've had to evolve as marketers. We've had to think about how to reach audiences and bring them to live streams, but also how to measure success and measure and think about how we drive engagement. Maybe share a little bit about how the live streaming game has pushed you to evolve and think about that in new ways. Yeah, this is, yeah, that's, oof, peek behind the curtain. This is a hot topic for us. It's an uncomfortable <laughs> one, but it's a good one that we, you know, that we're we're excited to talk about because we, first of all, we're, as a global company, we're we're not only in competition with all their brands that are, that are in the U.S., we're in competition with one another for doing live streams, and then with our global brands that exist. So Brahma had a, Brahma, which is part of our global portfolio, had an incredible success uh, early on and multiple hour live stream and you know everyone's like concurrence 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 how many eyeballs can we get because literally you know we've been sitting in this location for you know, a month and you're literally not going anywhere so concurrence with the name of the game that was our currency and then Kaz, myself the production team with ronnie and everyone we're trying to and spencer we're trying to very hard to push the needle forward and say okay it's not only concurrence but it's also bod and VOD has been something that's incredibly important to us because as you evolve from appointment viewing to I'm going to watch this on my own time, right? As quarantines are lifted, like we feel we, we feel very happy that we were able to start to move the pendulum as as sort of quarantine is happening and not happening. So concurrence with the name of our game that was our like phase one. Then we're like concurrence with VOD, and again, like peek behind the curtains is okay. Let's make sure we have enough financials to support this for a week for a month. Right, because we start educating the teams on we got to make sure we can support that VOD and the license for that. Now, fast forward months, years, I don't know how long it's been, but now we're like, all right, we want view time. We're starting to compare this and we're starting to look at this. Okay, we're known for putting out 15, 30, 60 second, 90 second spots. When you start to compare that to concurrent, concurrent people watching and their view time, we've got people watching for 15, 20, 30 minutes. How many ad spots is that? Oh, wow. Our ROI starts to go through the roof because you're tuned into something that we produce that it's an advertising mechanism, but it's not like fully, you know, it's branded, but it's tasteful, as Cass was saying. Like, it is not a logo stop. So that's kind of the shift in mentality at AB is, you know, yeah, we're going to ask the artists, like the integrations are extremely important in an authentic way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have our logo bug on there. Yeah, we want you to do the toast and have product in hand. But that view time is super important. So how we start thinking about that and, you know, maybe a little tease to the future with something we're going to announce soon uh, uh, for end of year. But that's something that we're, we're very, very conscious of. So it's, it's really view time for us. And then let's get people RSVP. Let's, I mean, the mm -hmm. fact is like, let's get that CRM engine going, right? We've got e-commerce, which is a huge focus for us. And so to be able to retarget and look at the data and, and, and work with friends like you, and say, okay, how can we talk to them about, all right, we know that you clicked on this like ad mat, and we, or we know that you you RSVP. How do we start kind of talking to them again and saying, oh, we know you're going to stock up. Mm -hmm. You know, whether New Year's Eve really is a, a stock up occasion. Finally, we're like, all right, we know everyone's going to try to be safe. How do we kind of get into the home and, and, and again, provide something with that real long view time opportunity? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, you know, when you think about that, you know, with a concert, it's kind of harder to continue that brand conversation, a traditional concert. But with that live stream, there's so many opportunities to reach back to those same audiences exactly. and continue the brand conversation. Um, and, you know, of course, that's something we uh, we think about all day long for our brand partners. Uh, but that is something really special. Um, not everything has been challenging. I mean, of course, we all want to go to concerts. We get that. But there have been some silver linings in uh, yes. the growth of live stream and the ability to really help brands and fans 
connect yeah, se- longer sequencing term. sequencing and, is so yeah. critical yeah. for us and and and, and anything that, that you know that next level of I'm not just going to serve you the ad. I'm going to be aware of the fact that you we've served it to you before. You're aware of the concert. You are SVP'd. Maybe then you want to sign up for the meet and greet. Maybe then you want to get the autograph merch. That's that's really that path and decision tree that like we're triggering on our media side. That's the, that is a, in a, its entire other engine with, with Christy and Brian and that whole team. It's remarkable. Um, you know, this is the language that Drew and Cass, like, we speak together, right? Is how do we start talking to them of, okay, you've already seen this creative. How do we tweak that next creative? Because we know you already saw the thing. We know you're already, already RSVP'd. What do we want to trigger? Maybe we want to trigger an e-commerce. Maybe you want to agree to stock up. Maybe we want to trigger a VOD after the fact. So the, the, the decision trees, we say it's a Gantt chart that's like falling off of the frame, falling off of, we say yeah, frame, but it's like falling off of our screens of, I can't even keep track of it, so that we leave that to, to Christy and the experts in, in that regard. But it's it's very cool when you really, really start seeing that art and science really come together. And I think you've seen us evolve too, right? Look at Home Edition where we started there, and now like looking back at Maluma, like we had audience engaging with us the entire time, requesting what right. song goes next, right? Same thing right. with the light. It's like, and that has been a lot of the background work that Shane and I work with with not only our with a b as like a whole what's the full consumer journey that's going to be but making sure the artist is along the way like yes. where did they like we impact some of the run of show sometimes like we we're thinking consumer first and where would be interesting for them to live and that's been a lot of what shana and i have done is like evolve from early covid home edition oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so you where yeah we remember when when uh, when at the one republic show we got a call from the VP and said, why is the logo backwards? Why is the neon backwards? And we were like, oh my gosh, it really right. is. And then we were like, it's a front facing camera. That's why, because they're going live on their Instagram. He was on live on his Instagram and he was live on his laptop. And we're like, wow, on one of those frames, it is backwards. And lo and behold, <laughs> after we got that call getting yelled at for that, we were like, all right, we need to make some reverse neons. But, but from a business perspective, fast forward. Our relationship with Bon Viv, Spike Seltzer, and Priyanka, mm-hmm. our innovation team, our packaging and supply team, Craig, Rob, if you're listening, I mean, remarkable. <laughs> we printed reverse labels. Yeah, shout out to the Huge. supply team. I That's mean, those awesome. are our biggest friends. Supply, procurement, packaging. It's incredible. They're like, oh, no problem. And they did a reverse one. So as we're doing live streams with Priyanka and we're celebrating women around the world and donating to their causes and celebrating those women, we still have the brand that's not reversed. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll say so something. Those little <laughs> details are like, it's so important. Huge. And I never want to get that call again, getting yelled at. Why is my neon backwards? Make me some reverse neon. <laughs> That, that's super interesting. And, and one of the things that when you're just talking about in that answer, it's just so apparent that your level of commitment to the artist uh, is just at the forefront of every decision that you make. Um, you know, f- for us, having started our company specifically to open up new revenue streams for artists and labels and content creators and have them be a part of the media conversation, that's so meaningful. I mean, your support for artists support Supporting arts the way you do as a company, it's not just paying lip service. You, you can see in your thinking and your execution how you put the artist first, the importance of it. Um, your team's doing amazing work together, obviously, and setting that standard. But I think that's part of why. Maybe share a little bit more about your commitment to the arts, why it's important to you personally, why it's important to uh, Anheuser-Busch and the industry at large. I mean, I think it's because we know who we are, right? Like Shane and I talk about this all the time. And she she spoke about Will earlier. It's giving opportunities where we know it's needed, right? Like even beyond just working with artists, this is something that we look at daily. Like how do we give opportunities to up and coming artists knowing what Budweiser does, knowing what Stella looks like on your resume. Like those are so important to give those types of chances because we have so many opportunities to do that within arts and other places i think that's where we find that level of authenticity growing even further right like where we can develop a stronger network like will was huge for us and (laughs) and he helped me create an entire like suite of visuals for maluma and that is so important is to give opportunities back to creative and develop that relationship and that's huge for us you know 
I love that answer. Um, so I know we're running out of a little bit of time. Uh, God, uh, that goes fast, uh, you know, but uh, just switching gears a little bit uh, about um, some of the new big brand bets that you're making. Uh, there have been some questions, so I want to at least take one question uh, from the audience about some of the new uh, brand platforms that you have coming in 2021 or, or new acquisitions, some of the smaller brands. Maybe share some examples, switching gears, uh, answering one of those uh, audience questions. Thank you very much for sharing that yeah, yeah. Uh, about how, how you tap into artist partnerships and how you think about branding for some of those newer acquisitions or, or new uh, products. Rock, paper, scissor. I mean, let's see. Um, I think, I think, to, I mean, two that are on the forefront of our minds and really, really exciting. So um, prior to joining AD six years ago, I was, I was in the spirits world. Um, but what's very remarkable is the AVs, we've always been very agile and we've always been consumer first. And I think that goes to show putting our money where our mouth is with those types of acquisitions. So think of Babe, think of Cutwater. Cutwater is something that you guys, if you, if you, I wish I had it on my display back here, but I've got some, some Bud Light innovation back there, but Cutwater can cocktails. I mean, I love telling this story of Yusuf where he and his partner, they were mariners. They loved fishing. They actually happened to found this award winning, I think it was over 900 spirits awards. And they're like, but shoot, we can't take the glass out on the boat and we really love cocktails. So let's can the cocktails. And so that sort of resurgence of that is, is very important to us, especially when you think of the occasion-based marketing that we do, the fact that we want to make sure that people can have remarkable cocktails, whether it's Cutwater or Drinkworks, which is our partnership with Keurig. Um, we want to make sure that people are having fantastic cocktails at home as well. So you think the AV at large also think of us as ready-to-drink spirits, also, also think of us as ready-to-drink canned wine, um, as well as high ball sparkling water. Like we really, we, we put our money where our mouth is. And I think, uh, it, it's, it really goes to show when we, we have acquisitions like that with, with teams that are ready to go, expect more marketing from us and more, uh, earned campaigns with, with Cutwater and, and Babe and those partners, uh, in 2021. Do you, do you think about artist pairings, um, a question from yes, the audience, a little bit, a different way for the smaller brands or for. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, because. You know, to, to your point earlier, the, the bigger brands, we've, we're, they're already, you know, famous. We already have the, we already have the awareness and the education. These ones, it's interesting to think about, okay, what is a big artist? When we think about, look at uh, with Brie Larson, I heard the, the panel before I was talking about Brie. He was talking to the strategist and she's like, I love eyeball. We're like, holy, wow. Let's call, let's talk to Troy, you know, and let's have, open up those conversations. And now it's just doors open. And, and, and those are the types of things Kess and I like to do is like, Let's just have those first conversations. Let's see what they love. And kind of circling back to what we were saying before is, what, what is it that AB is doing for you that others really can't? That's great. Andrew, do we, do we have time for a little more? Uh, yeah, well, actually, I, I had one quick question for you, ladies, because uh, as your boss, Marcel Marcondes, just told me recently for our CMO of the Week series, Super Bowl planning cycles are tighter than ever, given the ever-shifting tone. So I'm curious, where, where are you guys now, whether it's from a talent perspective for your spots or especially the presumably virtual events that you guys will now be doing where you've historically done it with Bud Light Hotel and other activations? Got scripts on scripts. <laughs> I was gonna say, Shannon, you go first. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think what's 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 sad, you know, just for us and everyone. I know I'm sure those that are tuned in, there some of you that were involved in Super Bowl Music Fest. That was one of our biggest initiatives for the last couple two years. Uh, our challenge was: you already sponsor Super Bowl, you have the exclusivity and the television. Uh, what do more? Do more. And we're like, okay, <laughs> um, but challenge accepted. And, and we, we created Super Bowl Music Fest, a three night, you know, we know we looked at just data of saying, okay, hotels are saying you have to book at least three nights. And we said, let's put something in entertainment together for three nights. And uh, so not having that has really put a huge, huge emphasis, uh, even more so than ever in the last you know couple of decades on, on our scripts. Um, so we're very excited. I, I will say, um, let's say from a Bud Light perspective, I think it is going to be a, a legendary year. I'll leave it at that. I like leave it. That. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, clearly we'll have to have you back in Q1. Um, yes. Season three. Drew, was there one more quick audience question you wanted to throw to the ladies before we uh, introduce the next session? Um, well, I would just, I'm, are there any interesting 
uh, New Year's plans you have as we come to the end of 2020 and we're about to get to 2021. Anything happening that you want to share and what excites you most about 2021 and the year ahead? I think you'll find that Shane and I are brewing up something special for New Year's Eve. Yeah. All right. So stay. T- we'll stay. We'll all it's stay good. tuned to see what happens with uh, with Budweiser and uh, and New Year's Eve. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Drew.